So I know it's been a while since I have shared my reading journal um, that I started this year where I am keeping track of the books that I read in somewhat of a different way than typical. So I'm not really taking down um, the books that I've written and like writing reviews or notes or commentary on them. I am keeping track of all of the books that I've read, when I finish them, their um, star rating, and then what number I'm currently on. And I need to catch up on filling that information on in. And then I also have a tracker of books that I have purchased this year and what I've spent on them. And then I keep track of the books that I have read this year that are from my bookshelf versus from the library. I'm keeping track of whether or not I read the book in a paper copy or a digital copy or an audiobook copy. I'm keeping track of my five-star reads of which there's very few, which is pretty normal. It takes a, it takes a lot for me to give something a five-star review. Um, and then I'm keeping track of four-star reviews, which this is just one page of four-star reviews. I have more further into the notebook. I'm keeping track of um, the different authors, so making sure that I'm reading black authors, disabled voices, indigenous voices, uh, Latinx voices, LGBTQ voices, and then these are just for fun pages where I am um, printing out the books that I've read and categorizing them by um, the color of their book cover which is just literally just for fun. There is no like practical purpose for any of these, but I love it. So as you see me flipping through here, you can see how this has progressed since the last time I shared it because it has been a little bit since I um, have shown any photos of this, even though I have been updating it on a monthly basis. And I love um, printing out these little tiny book covers and adding them in here. Here's a continuation of my um, four star book category. And then I also have been keeping in here notes on some of the books that I've read. Usually I only take notes or not even take notes. Usually I only pull quotes from like the um, nonfiction books that I read um, for whatever reason. Here's where I'm keeping track of books that were more than 500 pages. And then here are the book categories. So books that I've read that are general nonfiction, that are autobiography, biography, contemporary fiction, historical fiction, literature, fantasy, romance, sci-fi, thriller, ah, horror, and young adult. And then I also have a continuation of notes and quotes. Really, it's just quotes here at the back. Um, so I have like a handful of pages left at the back end. Um, I have an idea to go back and do like monthly spreads of like these are the books that I read in a month um, and then there's which leaves like a small smattering of pages that is probably best served by keeping track of any notes I have from the books that I've read but as you can see this thing is like all twisted and warped because the majority of the images the photos that I've printed have been like pasted in towards the top so this guy is like super chunky and I don't think that it's ever gonna be kind of like normal. I don't know, like even if I read more and kind of even out the number of like photos that go towards the bottom. So I have a crazy idea. I think what I'm going to do is disassemble this entire notebook into individual pages. And then likely what I will do is hole punch so that I can put them into like a ring binder um, because this just looks so odd and it's getting pretty beat up. And even though I absolutely love this notebook, I love the color, um, and it has been awesome for me so far. It's just, it's just not sustainable just with the way that it's like twisting and warping and like, it's just not going to fix itself. So next I will be sharing disassembling it and putting it into a notebook. I'm kind of scared. I tried to Google to see if there had been any other videos out there about disassembling notebooks. I didn't really see any just looking really quickly. So we are going into uncharted territories. We will see how this goes. 
So what I did is go to each of the signatures where you can see the threads. Um, so there's like eight or nine signatures in this notebook. They are all um, clumped together by, or they're held together by threads. And so every so many pages, there are these threads that I can see, which I was able to cut using some precision um, scissors. And then I am leaving one page of the signature in the notebook because that one was kind of, each of those were really heavily glued into um, these fabulous notebooks. So they were a little bit more difficult to get out, but I just went through and um, cut out the relevant pieces that I needed to. And then I went back and very gently, but firmly pulled out the pieces that had been glued into the binding of the notebook. And um, it took a little bit of work, but this is really strong paper, sturdy paper. So um, I didn't do any damage, which was great. Um, it was just a matter of kind of firmly, but also gently tugging these um, to get them out. And then I will start cutting them down. So it actually came apart pretty easy. Um, I had to do some gentle tugging to get the like first page of the signature out because that was heavily glued in. But everything else came out pretty simply. And so now it is just a matter of trimming each of these pages down and then deciding if I'm gonna hole punch them, if I, to put like in a ring binder, or if I am going to go down the like, um, oh goodness, what are those called? Uh, the uh, disc rings, I think, right? And I am not gonna be too um, particular about all of the pages being like the exact same size because that's just a battle and futility, if you ask me. So I will just be trimming off the rough edges that were close to the middle of the um, book and then remembering that there's specific order to these pages, obviously. Um, because of how the signatures were made. And so I will just be trimming and then figuring out my next move. Okay, so I finished cutting up all of my pages. This is the stack of them, and you can still see some of the, um, where the signatures were, where the thread was, but I'm fine with that. I'm not worried about it at all. So everything is still in order. The next thing I'm gonna do is three hole punch using this guy, it's for six ring binder, because I've decided that I'm going to use this, um, it wasn't, it, it's from Allie Edwards and it was from several years ago when she was doing like a story planning um, product. And so these are for story planning. Um, I think the intent was for the page size to be like half of a letter. So what is that? Uh, five and a half by eight and a half or something like that. Um, so it actually fits this A6 size pretty well. I took one of the random scraps of paper, one of the papers that had, um, it didn't have anything on it yet. So it was just kind of lying around just to do a test. And I think it's gonna fit nicely in here. Um, I do, I, I will likely have to punch into some um, little books here and there if they're too close to the edge. I'm not gonna worry too much about that because I mean, this, this, this is a fix for something that I started earlier this year. So um, I can't be too disappointed. It is leading me to think about what I'm gonna do next year because I do really enjoy this product project. 
I've been having a lot of fun with it. So um, I want to do it again yes, next year, but I'm thinking that I'm going to have to um, probably design something, figure something out um, to where I can set it up for the beginning of the year and for it to be sustainable and not have to, where I'm not having to figure out some kind of workaround further into the year because it's gotten like wonky. Um, so what I'm planning to do is just keep on punching and I just generally eyeball it. Um, so we will see how it goes. I'm not too worried about it being like punched in different places at times. I just need to get this in a binder and so we can move on with our lives and um, so I can get back to documenting in this project that I enjoy so much. And so I will continue to do this until I have all of my pages into the new album. And um, it may be the case that I have to, um, that this might not be big enough. But luckily I actually purchased two of the story planner binders, these things, um, back in the day. I always do that. I always tend to get, if I'm gonna get one album and like a new design of something, I will get two just cause I like the way that looks on my shelf. So thankfully past Jamie was looking out for present Jamie. And uh, therefore I have two binders that these can go into if I um, run out of space in here. And even though this is unbound and in a stack, you can still see that the top, the top side of things is a lot thicker than the bottom side of things. So that's what I'm trying to fix and alleviate by putting them into these binders. And hopefully I'll figure out a good like middle point to where half of the album can go into one of these and the other half can go into the other if that's gonna be the case, which I think it probably will be. So we will, can, I'll continue to working on this and show you what it looks like when it's all done. So I finished transferring my pages out of the notebook that I had him, had them in into these two um, ring binders. These are older from Allie Edwards. They're not quite six by eight, but let me flip through really quickly. I have also added in some dividers that I'm planning to decorate. Um, this is paper from Studio Calico. Um, I believe it was designed by Pippi Post. Um, it was one of their recent um releases so i picked it up because i loved it and so i've just divided things up into loose areas so these are all the books that i've read so far this year this is going to be a divider and i'm planning to um cover this page up and re-stamp this so that it can go on this side of the divider um but just kind of loose sections where i was able to um kind of divide things up this is another one that I'm gonna cover over. And then we get into what I've read from my bookshelf versus what I've read from the library. And then a paper copy versus digital copy versus audiobook copy. This I'm gonna redo and probably put on this side of um, the divider and then cover this one up and we have the various different authors and the, another one that I'm wanting to redo and then the last section that ended up being a good place to kind of divide things was um, all of the different color um, pages that I have so they fit in here nicely and they're gonna sit better now that they're in this ring format versus the bound format that I had them in. And then this was the last page. And I think that I'm going to probably um, pull all these up and redo this and put it on a full sheet because it seems a little bit odd to have like a, a shorter sh um, page on this last one. And then I can continue to add other four-star reads and then um, 
I will probably peel some of this up or just cover it. Or actually, I'm getting rid of this whole thing, so never mind. So this was volume one. It ended up having to be put into two albums because of how much I had in there, but that's fine. So um, here is another of the Pippi Post paper for Studio Calico, and I just love how, I just love this design. This one I ended up, this is the back half of the notebook that I was able to rearrange things. So I definitely want to do some monthly um, pages where I kind of write, or I put the little um, book covers, and this is what I run January, February, March, April, May, etc. That was originally going to be the end of the notebook, but now because I've pulled it out, I've reshuffled things, and I like that it's the beginning, another paper divider, and then these I was a little bit better about putting, um, I know, honey, putting a page in between so it's easy to um, kind of have a division there um, versus ones where I just did them back to back. So these are all of the various genres. And then this last section is on my notes and quotes section. And I consolidated these because these were in two different places in the notebook. And now they're all together. There's also this 500 plus page one that I just happened to um, have after the note section, so it's gonna stay back there and that's fine. And then the rest is all just um, leftover paper, which there's not that much left, actually. So once I redo the few pages that I have, that's gonna uh, redo the few pages that I want to, so that's three sheets. The rest is, I just have like four or five sheets left. And I'll probably allocate these to more notes and quotes. What I'm planning to do going forward is keep my notes separate from the rest of this type of um, reading journal. So I'll be able to utilize those gorgeous notebooks that I have. Um, I have tons of gorgeous notebooks and I'll be able to utilize them just for like the notes and the quotes section. I really like having those kind of pulled out and separate. And then um, going forward next year, I'm already thinking about what I'm gonna do and be on the lookout for that because I think what I'm planning to do is six by eight. And then um, I'm going to create and design some printables that I will likely have um, for sale in my shop at the beginning of the year. Um, but yeah, this is how this came together and I'm super excited to play in these two, <laughs> two notebooks, two albums, and to also decorate each of the little section dividers that I have. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you.